Are you ready? Mm -hmm. all Let's right, go. All right. Damn, how do I start this? Don't, don't cut it. Just leave it. Let it roll. Um, so it's, uh, today is Tuesday, November 5th. It's 5.14 p.m. Um, I wrote this about so long time ago. I can't even count back. So I wrote this, uh, long, really long paragraph on April 17 of 2019. And I'm about to read it to you guys because I promised myself once I was out all of this, I would post this, uh, statement of how life was and all this stuff so it's been six months as i've known about me being diagnosed and going through treatment not many people know what kind of cancer i have not that i'll say anytime soon because it's personal if you guys know it's out there um i got a long story nothing to no bash you know nothing just it got out there it doesn't matter anymore um but my life has completely changed since November 28th. Um, I haven't stopped seeing a doctor since. I haven't really felt any kind of peace since then, but it's okay. I don't know where I'm at right now in my life, no idea. I feel super lost and loopy. I feel confused as to why, but obviously I don't know. No one knows, but one thing I've learned from this is to stay positive even if you can anymore, like me. So try it. I know sometimes things happen and you may get all mad and stuff, but don't. Try not to at least. For the last five months, I've tried so damn hard to Stay happy, stay positive, but once I found out that cancer is still there after chemotherapy, I lost it. I said to myself, will I make it? Will I ever see the end to this? Why was I lied to? But no matter what the doctor said that day, I went home, slept it off, cried maybe an hour or so, and then may, my mom came in and said to me, you should go out and have fun. So I did. That's what I've been doing for the past three weeks. Because at this point, I don't know where I'm going to be in a couple months, but all I can hope for is a good outcome in this. Today, April 17, I go for another CT scan and another test to make sure we are good and talk about my favorite thing ever, which is really, which really isn't, but to talk to my surgeon about my next coming surgery. I personally hate needles. Now I think to myself, imagine getting cut open from the bottom of your boob all the way down to the bottom of your stomach. Ouch. Yeah, I know. It sounds nasty knowing they are going to move your organs out the, out the way to get where they need to. It's scary. But you know what? The faster we get this done, the faster I get an answer to my question from earlier. It may be the end, or I may need more treatment. And about school, hmm, I really don't know what to say, but I don't feel the same anymore. To me, school feels like scary, even though I can see my period, which is everyone. But I don't feel the same anymore, not knowing the answer to a math problem, or knowing how to sing an A-sharp, or how to even sing. Like, cancer doesn't only fuck with you on the inside, but it changes your life completely. Every time I step a foot in the school, I think of what I used to be like. I may have been addicted to some, or maybe just ne never even talked to you. Doubt it, though. I talk to everyone, but I don't feel like the same room when I was a year ago. The silly, goofy, smart, somewhat. But I know there's a summer school and I know there's online class to take if you don't make it. I'm not so worried about that right now, but for, but I know for a damn fact I'm gonna get a diploma. Imagine having cancer and being diplomaless. Don't think it's don't think it's a word, but whatever. Life would really suck though. Another cool thing that uh, cancer teaches you is who you are and who your best friends are, or people who care for you. I can tell you a damn fact is that I thought the people who were my best friends ended up being a stranger through all this, and I. And the people who I thought weren't my best friend or even a friend at all um, have been seen to care for me more and be more respectful towards my situation than who I thought I could trust. It's crazy, isn't it? But that doesn't matter to me because I know I have my family and my two buddies and a whole different family, which is my girlfriends, well, ex-girlfriends. Uh, and also I have a uh, wonderful girl, ex-girl, not to brag or anything, but yeah, I learned that too. Uh, not where my plans and ideas towards being diagnosed. Like, what are my future ideas? Well, you know, everybody knows I love my car and how much cars mean to me. So my plan is to use my car as a symbol towards people like me. A car people will smile at and be like, wow, he made it. I want to use my car to raise awareness and raise money or toys or a food drive for those at American Family Children's Hospital. You guys are probably thinking, how the hell is he going to do that? Well, my plan is to make my own organization for people who love cars and like to show off their cars or bring a toy cereal box or whatever they feel like bringing to a car meet. And I'll have a truck there so we can try to fill it up and then drive it down to American Family Children's Hospital in Madison. So, yeah, that's my plans once I get it back, uh, once I get my car back, which is, is funny because this was like months ago and I still don't have my car back. <laughs> but I want to say thank you to my mom and dad, my siblings, my brother, Cole and Robert, my ex and her family, and of course all of you out there who have truly supported me and all the parents who have supported me as well. And you who took the time to uh, listen to this, uh, I actually don't know when I'll post this. Whenever I, want, I post it, I wanna say, 
to myself, Ramon, I hope you're doing good and things are better. And I said, watch me post this in like six hours, which I never did, but that's my story. And uh, I know it's quick, but it's like, it's not the time to be emotional. Obviously, um, I have surgery tomorrow. My last surgery, hopefully for a very, very, very long time. Um, I'm very grateful to stand here and say this. Like I said, I did promise myself one when I wrote this that same night that I was going to uh, put this out there for other people to read and how I felt through all of it. And obviously I have the chance to be here and say it. Um, and about, you know, how I set up a max and all that, uh, or all the people that were there and now gone, like even though you guys are gone or whatever, I still owe you guys a big thank you because you guys were there for me uh, through it all. Um, and I'm just very grateful to be here once again. And uh, tomorrow is a start to a new journey and my plans from now on are to get this uh, organization going and raise awareness for people like me. Thank you. All right, so I'm shooting this for the second time because DK is my camera guy and it wasn't focusing. But I was saying the reason I decided to make a video and I'll post a picture with a statement and all that was because I felt like I owe those people that actually were there and all that. Uh, thank you. Not it's not personal, personal like not, it's not like personally towards you, but like it's still me saying thank you. Um, I just feel like I you know those people that were there for me. Des they deserve all this. Uh, they deserve for me to say thank you to them and. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard for me to, I can't go around and say thank you to everybody that was there because it'll take forever, but I can do a video and say thank you to you guys, uh, for everything you did from doing the shirts, from, uh, sending me messages, from always, uh, asking what was going on, uh, staying updated and just, you know, making me feel really positive to the, uh, to the whole basketball team, the girls and boys, you know, the, the, those were the days, um, you guys were really, uh, made my days brighter as being in the hospital for weeks um and watching the live streams from my sister's phone you know and just overall seeing the pictures on your stories it was amazing uh and another way i can say thank you is to those who aren't there anymore um you know like there's friends out that, uh, that are go uh, gone and uh friendships that were ruined and um obviously uh as you guys know i Recently, me and my ex recently broke up a couple months ago, and uh, that's that. Um, I'm not gonna say anything about that. Um, not that it matters to me, but I still, uh, like my parents have always taught me to say thank you to those who were there and uh, just overall be positive about everything and not this on them because your friendships or whatever were ruined i it's the whole opposite i want to thank them for being there for me for taking care of me for uh uh being someone i was able to uh trust in and cry to and explain my emotions towards it's weird to uh, make this video and be thanking them obviously because everything ended in bad terms but I'm not here to fix anything or, or, or make them look bad or make myself look bad. I'm just here to say thank you because I was really grateful to be uh, with people like that and uh, with my friends that were, uh, you know, like no, like we aren't, we're not longer in touch that much. It's still a thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys will always be a part of my story, and that's that for that. Now for my next thing is for those that are going to go and watch this video or who have even made it this far. Um, I know you guys are going to, there's going to be people like that are going to talk about the video and probably make fun of it. Probably take it as a joke. Probably be like, oh, look, uh, he's talking about you and blah, 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 blah. And it's going to be people like that, but that does not matter to me. What matters to me is the people that are still watching this, listening to me talk, are here to see and listen to what I have to say. Um, it's not easy to make these videos, obviously, because it reminds me so much of the past. And, you know, I don't need that kind of stuff. But 
I just had to let that out there, and that's the reason why I made this video. Maybe a little long, I'm sorry, but I had to. Um, now that this is done, um, it's officially 5.42 um, 5 p.m. the night before my surgery. Uh, I have to get home pretty soon and uh, shower and decontaminate my whole body. My, my whole room needs to be decontaminated because I can't have any kind of germs for uh, surgery tomorrow at 8 a.m., which is my last one, like I said, for a long, long time, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, now there's going to be more information on the fun, uh, not the, on the foundation that I'm going to do with uh, a few, uh, one of the dealerships and maybe a couple uh, restaurants. And I'm, ho per I'm hoping that uh, make I email Make-A-Wish to see if they wanted to jump in it and help me raise some money for... Uh, you know, to raise awareness and and do more research on this kind of stuff. Uh, that's my goal, uh, and that's what my car is going to be used for. Not just to drive it around and all that. It's going to have a, uh, a symbolism of who I am and what my goal is. And for those that, you know, for those that are going through it to be like, wow, like, you know, it's pretty cool. I want to do something like that, you know. So that's my ultimate goal after this and that's the video i'm gonna drop on saturday which is when uh saturday next weekend when i get the car back and hopefully everything's good and we're gonna start working uh as a team uh me and my crew which is the boys and family uh we're gonna start all working on this so that's my next thing and then that'll be saturday next week so thank you guys for watching um stay tuned dk we out